talk about. Uh, I guess we could just ask, what do you consider meditation? And what does that really do with spirituality? You know, we see it very common today, but it's, I think we need to address what it really is. What's, what's the heart of it? Well, there's plenty of sitting practices and various things like that, but really, what is... That's another very big question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you want to link your small soul to big soul. And the more you want to do that, the more you realize that unless you're well connected, or as Abraham says, in the vortex, uh, the more you're in tune in the flow, the better things go for you. And the more you're out of tune, out of flow, going upstream rather than downstream, the more dissatisfaction will creep up in your life. So meditation practices, or rather contemplation practices, on the most fundamental level is about noticing whether you're going up or downstream, upstream or downstream. Are you in resistance or are you in allowing? Um, because ultimately connecting with macrocosm, connecting with God, connecting with bigger than you, connecting with the universe, is about noticing that you're disconnected. And that's what meditation really does, is it makes you aware uh, you know, of your disconnection and helps you to become better connected. Do you need meditation? No. But meditation is to a vehicle, uh, well, let me say it in a, in a less dramatic way, just like it's more convenient to go from New York to Los Angeles in an airplane or in a car than walking or taking a horse. So it's more convenient to do spiritual practices. Because, of course, you can spend a million years without spiritual practices. Or you can, once you realize there is a problem, you can address it with meditation. So once you understand that you're disconnected, you can address the disconnection with meditation. And uh, if you are not aware that you're disconnected, which is majority of human beings at this point, well, we're getting less than, you know, more, more and more people are getting connected, you know, getting awareness of this disconnection. But, you know, if you're disconnected, this, what I'm telling to you right now, will mean absolutely no sense. So, if you're coming to us, the modern series, you are aware of your disconnection, by definition, and you want to address it. And there's not a single human being on this planet who is completely connected. If you were completely connected, you would also be dead. So, part of coming on this planet, and playing around in this world, and having fun, in this world is being disconnected, reconnecting, and being disconnected and reconnecting, having that dance of hide and seek. That is a metaphor which comes from India, cosmic dance of hide and seek. God shows you his, his face to you, then you kind of lo lose the faith, fa face, you know, you lose that sight and you feel distress. <clears throat> in fact, if you go deeper into this, the distress is actually, you can see people crying for God. And what is this crying for God? It's from non-believer's point of view, someone who is not aware of his or her disconnection, it doesn't make any sense. You know, a person, why should he or she cry for some ridiculous thing as God? But to a disconnected person, this disconnection is very real. And if you are more connected than disconnected, the pain from disconnection is very, very serious. It can be extremely problematic person can be very, very distressed. So, coming back to meditation. There are two kinds of meditation, broadly speaking. A meditation which, which is inside style of meditation, which makes you observe, notice what your current state is. And then meditation which moves you in the direction where you want to go. And I've forgotten how I call it in one of my articles. I, I have nice terms. Uh, for these two kinds of meditation. So, uh, inside style of meditation is very common to Buddhist practice, but inside meditation is something 
uh, everyone should be uh, good at. Why? Uh, because uh, being aware of this connection, being aware of where you're at, is more important than anything else. So by observing where you are, how you feel, uh, what's happening inside and outside, and becoming really centered in that experience, in that observation, continuous observation, being centered on the present moment and understanding what's happening in the present moment is what for many people enough to attain the connected state. And the name for connected state is self-realization. Um, however, in, particularly in Tantra, visualizations are very prominent. And what does visualization do? Ultimately, a visualization means what? You are saying, okay, I'm here, but I would like to be there. So you start to visualize, how is it like to be there? So for example, in the most crude way, you want to be rich, so you visualize yourself already rich, and you think about what you can do with these riches. Or, more spiritually, you visualize yourself as a deity, and uh, you play with the qualities of that deity. Okay, say I'm a Buddha, so I'm peaceful, I'm wise, I'm insightful, these are qualities of Buddha. I know how to teach others, nothing disturbs me, I'm calm in both easy situations and difficult situations. So these are qualities of Buddha, and you meditate on these qualities. And in Tantras there are elaborate processes how to better yourself through these visualizations. Many of tantric techniques, in fact all of them, are considered to be sacred. And sacredness, in my opinion, is just a device to um, make your concentration on these visualizations better. Increase visualization. So if you consider something to be sacred, you will respect that more. And as such, you will focus on that process more. But, ultimately, it's just you need to be aware of yourself, that's inside style of meditation, and you need to focus yourself in the direction of where you want to go. And that's for the visualization. And that's all there is to the path.